Unaffordable flood insurance. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Let's have a look at this article from ABC News because it's discussing flood insurance, which is probably at the top of mind of many Australians right now, particularly those in Sydney and New South Wales who are suffering through the dramatic and significant flooding that's going on down there. So, like many Australians, Joe couldn't afford to take out flood insurance. Now he's paying the price. Can you afford to live somewhere then? That's the problem. If it's at a, such a high risk of flooding. We need to build them like they built in the old days, like the Queenslanders, where you're actually, your house is up on stumps. So you can, you know, you, at least your goods and possessions can handle it. So a month ago after, oh no, he just bought in. A month ago after renting for years, Joe Wilkinson bought his dream home in North Haven of the New South Wales mid-north coast. It's now been ruined by flood water. We borrowed some money from parents and in-laws to get a deposit. Oh, no. And it was just about manageable. The price they were asking without breaking the bank. And we finally settled a month and a half ago, he told 7.30. There's a lot of old fixtures in here. And they absorb a lot of water and just disintegrate it in a couple of days. After such a big purchase, Mr. Wilkinson decided against paying $13,000 for flood insurance. The damage bill is now his to pay. $13,000 for flood insurance, guys. Shouldn't that cost be factored in to the valuation of these properties when they're selling? Why are they selling for so much then? Its flood insurance was too expensive at the time, he said. It just wasn't feasible. And when you decide something like that, you don't think a month down the line you're going to be inundated with water. Poor guy. Affordability of flood insurance a major concern. Mr. Wilkinson is not alone in his decision to forego flood insurance. According to Allianz, one of the nation's, nation's biggest insurers, 95% of its customers in New South Wales have decided not to take out flood cover. Consumer Watchdog, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, has had its eye on the affordability of insurance. It found in cyclone and flood prone prone areas of northern australia premiums have increased 178 percent over the past 10 years among the recommendation was more investment to reduce the risk of disasters andrew hall from the insurance council of australia said more mitigation work such as building dams and levees was key to reducing premiums yeah well we need to increase our potable water regardless but this is the problem, because the hippy dippies not in my backyard crowd will protest building dams again and again and again. And this is the consequence. This is the consequence. When you're worried about a little rodent somewhere in the middle of nowhere or a dam that might, you know, destroy the ecosystem, but it'll save lives and homes. This is the consequence. And let alone just access to water for farming and you know, drinking. If we can invest more into the infrastructure that can mitigate against these kinds of challenges like floods and bushfires, we will see a significant drop in the cost of insurance in this country, he told 7.30. This is, this is how, how ideologically driven push to put environmentalism above human development affects our cost of living. You've got someone now who is scraping by to get into a home, borrowing money from family just to get a deposit together, and then can't afford insurance. This is, this is the cost. This is the hidden cost of, of these ideologic ideologues having an impact on Australia, manifesting here. There you go, guys. Over the last three years, Insurers have paid out around $7 billion in claims in natural disasters. And in the last calendar year, insurers across the nation made only $35 million in profit. Emergency Management Minister David Littleproud said the government was committed to increasing funding for mitigation, but asked that insurers keep their promises in reducing premiums. 
We ca we're currently working with the state to roll out $260 million worth of mitigation work, he said. We'd expect there'd be transparency from insurance companies about how that would drive down premiums because their track record hasn't been great in some parts of the country. The money I would spend on insurance could fix the house. Well, there's the question. Should you bother with insurance or self-insure? If you have that money and do what the insurance companies do, just take that 16000 a year and put that into investments. West of Sydney, London Derry resident Greg Teal is another who opted not to take out flood insurance after being told it would cost 16000 a year. The bottom level of his home was inundated with flood water. He's also suffered about 70000 in damages to his stock feed business. I believe the council did a flood study, and straight away the insurance company started charging a fortune for their flood insurance, he told 730. I just took the viewpoint that that money I would spend on insurance could fix the house anyway. Well, self-insure then. That means you're, you're putting that money aside and investing it yourself to draw upon with the hopes that you won't get a disaster so soon. So the New South Wales government is charging insurers. Mr. Hall said in New South Wales premiums were also being pushed higher because the state government charged insurers to help fund emergency services. The insurance industry wants the levy abolished. That's another tax, guys. Some more taxes. In New South Wales, residents pay almost double what residents in Victoria pay in state government taxes, Mr. Hall told 730. This is a real disincentive for people to insure their properties for what it, it should be insured for, and it can drive a level of underinsurance across the state. This is because the government are in using... I mean, this is the problem, guys. Same thing everywhere. It's the unintended consequences of government intervention in the market. Oh, we'll just put a levy there. We can, we can fund some new stupid program or something. There you go. Underinsured. People feel it. The New South Wales government said it had no plans to change the levy or how it was collected. Oh, there you go. Fantastic. Mr. Littleproud said the current flood crisis also highlighted the need for planning law reform. This is a legacy piece of poor governance of, of both local and state governments, he said. We had state and local planning laws that have allowed people to build in areas where they simply shouldn't have. The insurance company said so far more than 22,000 claim, claims had been lodged for flood damage worth about $350 million. Well, the question is, I mean, here you've got another one. If your insurance bill is 30000 per year, it's sending a message, don't live there. The question is... Are buyers, are buyers making sure that they're aware of the insurance costs of moving somewhere? Didn't look like he did. The old bloke, you know, he's going 16 grand. You know what? I'll self-insure. Makes sense too. What do you think? And I mean, the government putting a levy on it, there's the unintended consequences. It disincentivizes people from taking this protection. So that increases the risk of these people becoming destitute and then depending on the government. Brilliant. Works really well. What do you reckon, guys? As always, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.